another kit build, another day in lockdown. But I've got something a little bit extra today. So this is the kit, so we'll just put that to one side. And I've decided to treat myself to a new pair of wire clippers. Um, these, I've just got them off Amazon, just a um, two in a bag. Um, and I've been using this one, that's why it's a bit marked up at the moment. But uh, after I lost my other one, other pair, I don't know where they've gone. I did have some workmen in the house and I think they've borrowed them and um, yeah, and uh, they've nicked them. Right, let's have a look. Um, I've got an odd bit of wire here. Um, I think these are, are quite good. Uh, I say I have been using them. Look at that. Yep, very good. Not very good for thicker wire like this. Um, I do have my other pair of pliers, bigger pair of pliers. They're quite good for doing sort of your mains cable cutting like that. Uh, and now I've got these for the component legs and for cutting smaller bits of wire. Ah. Anyway, that's them. Uh, put them back over there. Clear this rubbish up and let's have a look at this box here. So let's have a closer look at this box. I quite like this because it comes in a nice sturdy box instead of a plastic bag like they normally do. Some instructions. This is our circuit board. This may give a clue to what this component, what this uh, kit build is. Um, lots of tracks on there. We've already got a blob IC has already been sold onto the board for us. Uh, this is what attracted me on the picture on the uh, when it was being sold is that all the components look are individually marked up on cardboard. I mean that is just absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? So there's no need to use the component tester. Everything is marked up, which is absolutely fantastic for people who are colour blind like me. Some more bits and pieces in here, the uh, battery connector, springs. Um, we've also got, I think there's a fuse holder in there as well. Test lead, come, test leads. And yes, so you probably guess what this is. This is a tester. It's a multimeter. Um, we have a oh, bit of metal there, bit of, I don't know what that is, but this is our uh, display, our LCD dis display. Um, so that must connect with, uh, yeah, there we go. There's a, one of these, what's called Zebra connectors on there. Uh, not looking forward to that bit because that bit I've not had much success on, but we'll see how it goes. So let's put all that back in the box. Put the leaves back in the box. So quick look at this. Ah, oh, look at that. It's got all the resistor numbers down the side here, all the component numbers. It's got all the values this side as well. That is absolutely brilliant and a big help Put back in there circuit board as before so that's why you know it's a, a, a tester uh, because you can move the switch around to select what you want let's have a look at the instructions zoom out of it so this will be our circuit diagram it is that's the model number, DT830B. Um, everything's in Chinese, as you would expect. But, uh, I'll have a dig around the internet and see if I can find uh, some English instructions. This is the actual instructions for the multimeter itself, but again, this is all in Chinese. Um, so, we'll see if I can find some English ones. So there you go, that is a really nice kit. Um, so let's get building. Right, I've got the circuit board mounted now. So um, there's something I just want to quickly point out. You'll notice that the holes for the components, particularly the resistors, are very close together. This means that instead of the 
um, resistor going across the circuit board like that with the two legs coming either side. We're going to stand the um, resistor up and then solder it in. So let's um, let's grab the first resistor out of the back, which is R1. And okay, so it's not <laughs> it's uh, it's not in numerical order. So let me just quickly show you that. Uh, let's get that. Here we go. So you'll see it's got R10, R20, R8, R21. So that's not quite uh, in the right order. Never mind. Okay, so um, R1 is just here. So this is R1. So R1 goes in that top corner. So what we've got to do for this one is it's got to go in something like that and I'm going to assume that because it's got a a circle on the left hand side there I'm going to assume that's the side where the bulk of the resistor's got to go it's not um, doesn't matter if it's plus or minus or plus or ground on a, on a resistor but I think it will matter when we get it mounted in the box as to which side the resistor is so I think it goes like that so that's our one done you can see that all right okay let's find our two let's do the same as that I'll just do the first couple and then I'll pause the video to do the rest, so R2's going in there. Okay, so that's R2 gone in. Just do the usual bending the legs out like that, so it's easy to solder. There we go. Right, okay, so that's moved slightly. So I think we we'll have to be careful about these because they are. Yeah, moving around a bit. Right, so I'm just going to check to see. Yeah, that looks okay. So, solder the other side now. Right, get my new clippers. Like a hot knife through butter. There we go. So that's got the first two resistors done. So what I'm going to do now is just some more. So you've got R3 is there, then I've got 21, 22, 23, 24. So I'll do a few down here. There's a few this side as well. Through here, 15, 14, 13, 12. So I'll, I'll get a few more of these on. You can see where the circle look is on the other side. Um, so let's get those on, and then I shall be back with you in a minute. Right, I've got eight on at the moment. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I was looking for R9. And I noticed that R9 is actually down the side here. It's this long connection here that says R9 on it, just there. So I've looked in the bag. I've looked in the bag, he said. And in here there is a bar. Can you see that bar in there, just there? So I think that goes on. Uh, that R9 it must be a big, like a big resistor across there. Yeah, because it's on the common there. Look. Uh, so I'll put that on later on. So my next one is R10. But one thing I've noticed with R10, if I can zoom in there, just to. See, right, on here you've got R10 and R34, but the pads are actually connected together. So let's just have a look at the instructions. 
So on the instructions, it's got R34 with R10 in parallel look, but it's got a little star next to it, just there. Um, I've got my Chinese interpreter uh, ready, so I don't know what it is, but so R34, I'm wondering if you only use one of those. So just let's just have a quick look here. So we've got an R10 there. So do we have an R34? 35 is there. No, we don't. We don't have an R34. So there we go. Then that's the reason. So we only put in the R10. We don't bother with the R34. There we go. So, while you're here, might as well do our, th our tent then. So I'm just doing the legs. There we go. Got the legs done. Oh, and I've dropped it on the floor just a minute. Well, that was lucky, found it first time. So, um, uh, 10, all right, so this is a normal type. I don't have to bend the legs as much. So we can just pop that in there, like so. That was a bit of a pain, but it's done. So let's just get it soldered up. Right, that's our 10 done. Okay, so what's next? Um, so I think I'll do these next, the 15, 14, 13 and 12. We've got 32 there and 20. Now, I remember seeing something. Yes, just a moment. Right, where was it? Where was it? So, ah, oh, here we go. Yeah, R32, look. That's a different, isn't it? Just a minute. Aha, this is R32. Just there. So that's not one of our normal type of resistors. I wonder if that's like a, a thermal resistor or something. Right, that needs to go into 32, that odd looking one there. Right, let's, uh, let's do 32 then. Um, okay, so just getting it off the card. Yeah, I'm guessing that this is a, a thermistor. Um, just senses the temperature, so that's in 32. Okay. There we go, right, okay, so that's that one done. So we can carry on with the other resistors down here now. Right, okay, so that's got the resistors in this side, um, all the way down here. Uh, looking at the board in general then, um, I've got a few more resistors to do this side down here so I'll pop those in and then after that what we can do is the capacitors that are around here as well so let me just pop in these resistors here and you can join me again in a second right that's got them resistors oh sorry the screwdriver's got a little flux on it uh, Let's find something else to point with. There we go, pen, that'll do. Right, so that's got those resistors done. Uh, just be careful because right in the middle it's got R35. It goes 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 35, 26, 27. So just be careful of that when you're solving them up. Right, okay, so I think the next thing we'll do is the capacitors around the top here. Right. So C1 is the first one. Now these aren't um, marked 
plus or ground so they can go in any way around. C1 pops in there. And C2. Uh, the only problem I've noticed, I mean it's great, absolutely great having these components on the cardboard, but sometimes because the legs are already pre-bent to go through the cardboard, they're a bit of a pain to get into the circuit boards. Right, it's got C2 done. Next one down is C4. So C4. 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 Yeah, like I say, these can be a bit of a pain because their legs are already pre-bent. Right, C4 goes in there. So let's solder those up. Okay, that's C1, C2, C4 done, um, and C3 and C5 were over the other side. So C3. All right, okay, let's have a quick look at the whole board then, shall we? So, so far so good. We've got uh, quite a lot of the components done on there at the moment. Well, I would if I focused in for you. Come on, focus up. There we go. Right, so I think that's the majority of them done on the top. So let's move the board a bit and see if we can get uh, the other components on now. Right, down in this corner we've got D3 and R19, so let's find R19 first off, we can pop that one in, and D3, which I presume is a diode, yes it is, oh, that's interesting. So on a diode, you've got to get it the right way around. So we've got a, a marker here, so we have to make sure that goes the right way around. Which way around does it go? Mm. Let us consult the printout. Right, D3 is here. Um, it comes from one of the connections from the selector switch. Um, the bottom of the triangle, the big part of the triangle, is the cathode which is the the ground and the line at the top is the anode which is the plus so it's going ground that way going to the plus that way um, normally the line is the same as the line on the diode so that's the plus side now that connects to r26 so if we have a look on the diode connection on the board there that links just there there's a little link sorry you can't see there's a little link there going to our 26 so that's where we need to put the diode so right I hope you can see that okay so the line is to the right hand side so that is going to go to the resistor side so I need to put it in the line, if you like, at the top of the diode. Right, 
Right, I've just taken a photograph of it, so I'll be able to put that on the video as well. So we can now get those legs soldered up. Right, we do have a transistor down in this corner here, so that's on the board at the bottom here. So let's get that off the board. And get that onto the circuit board. I'm just trying to bend the legs a bit. Right, so we've got to flatten around, just match it up with the transistor, so they're flattened around. The sides are the same. Here we go, it just pops on there. And I'm just bending the legs underneath, so you can't see it. I'll show you in a second. There we go, I just bent the legs. Now these holes look very close together. In fact, the two on the right hand side are in fact touching and the one on the left hand side isn't, so I have to be very careful with this to make sure that I don't short it out in fact what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop, pop a bit of flux on just to help just to help the solder stick in the right place so let's do the leg by itself first there we go. It doesn't matter if those two join because they joined on the board anyway. Just make sure that the third leg isn't joined. That's okay. Great. That's got that one done. So <clears throat> I think we'll attack this big resistor across here now. This one here. Okay, so <coughs> let's get the. I'll put it in such a big bag to make it awkward to get out. Come okay, on, there we go. Right, so this big copper resistor goes across there like so. It's cut to the right size, so it's got to plunk it on like that, and then we just got to solder it up. It's it's gonna be big Right, that's that side done. I'm going to just flip it over and have a just quick check on the other side. Your <coughs> yeah, solder's come through on that top one, but it's not come through on the bottom one there. So I'm just going to dab it, just a little bit of solder on here. Right, so we've got these connectors here. So let's uh, get those while we're here. Right, let's got those, so we'll pop them uh, like so. So, um, yeah, so the the flip side of this, that, that piece of metal still hot, is actually the top. So this, this is actually the top that goes in, so our connectors will push into here. So that's why the going to be soldered this side. Right, let's get them done. Now these are going to need a bit of heat as well. Right, let's put them in place. Okay, what's next? Well, I think what we'll do next is the fuse. So I've got the fuse holders out of the bag, <coughs> and I've noticed something. Um, 
and if I can zoom in to show you. So if you look at the uh, fuse holder, you'll see a little clip on the end here. So let's make sure that goes on the end. In fact, there's a tiny spring attached to that lock. That tiny spring is going to be used for something else. That tiny spring has got uh, stuck in there. Back in a moment. Right, one tiny spring removed. As I was saying, there's a piece of metal bent on the end there, so we have to make sure that, that goes on the end. I must hold the help hold the fuse in place, and the same on this one. There's one bent piece of metal on the end there, so again, that's just going to go on the end after it's finished pinging off the board. Hold that in place. Right, the other thing I'm going to do is to, I'm actually going to put the fuse in. And the reason why I'm doing this now is it will hold it straight as I solder it in place. There we go. So the fuse is in, blue tacks on. Let's solder that up. Yeah, I've got it a bit gummed up on there, but I'll clean that off in a minute. Right, okay, what's next? Got one resistor down in this corner, R18. So let's put that one in. I've got one resistor left on the piece of cardboard. Let's have a look at that. So, which one have I got left? I've got R30. Aha, I see it down in the corner there. Right, let's. That's one that I've missed somehow. Okay, so where was it? R30, R30. Oh, right, so that was it. It's down the corner here. Just there. So I've missed that one. So let's quickly do that one now. I think that'll be lost. Okay, I think that's all the small components. We've got a variable resistor or something to put in the corner here. We've got this connector here. We've got the power to go on. So let's have a look at those now. Right, so this variable resistor down the corner, let's see if we can get that on. This is fairly easy because the legs are usually quite springy. After saying that, this one this one isn't. <laughs> Never mind, legs are fairly easy to bend, so just bend that in place. And there we go, and I can just pop a bit of solder on there. I don't normally have to crop the legs on these, but I'm just going to snip the ends off. There we go, just so it doesn't foul anything on the main box. So let's have a look at this connection down in the corner here, this multi-pin connector. So that's this little thing uh, for testing. I've noticed there's a, there's a little key, see that line down there, there's a key there. So 
that must line up with something. Um, so that ah, uh, so that lines up here. Look. So let's get this circuit board off. So we know that it's going to go that way around because that's the wheel. Uh, that's the connection across the top for the display. So that's going to fit something like that. Is that in the right place? Yeah, I think it is. If I just do it one more round, I think that's too far out. Yeah, it is. Let's bring it one back again. Yep, that looks like it's about right. I'll tell you what I'll do, I think I'll solder one leg on just to hold it in place. And then uh, I will just offer it up again against the the case. I was gonna stick a bit of blue tack on. There we go. Right, just gonna put one dab of solder on. Right, I've had to mount it onto the vise so I can see and I've put a small dab of flux on there because these are quite close together and I just want to make sure that this solders up. Okay, so there we go, that's one, one leg done. That's all I want to do at the moment. So let's take it off the vise again. I'm not going to force it on yet because it, I think there's a few things that we need to do first to uh, yeah, like, the, like these out lining up with the holes it should do either at the moment so but um, that does look like it's in the right place because that key is now lining up just there that's okay. Right, let us solder the other pins up. Now we know that that's right. Let's take the blue tack off. And I've just noticed that it's not quite flat on the board layer. Look, so let's <coughs> just warm that solder joint up and just straighten it up so. It now looks flat to the board, which it didn't before, so that's okay. <clears throat> right. So I'm not particularly happy about them two in the corner there. They are stuck down, those two there. So I'm just going to put a bit more flux around there. I'm just going to see if I can just get a little bit more sold on there because they're not quite right. And what I don't want is a dry joint. Okay. 
Right, so they look okay now. Right, while I'm here, I'm going to put the battery connection on. <clears throat> so, let's put the cable through the hole. Like so. And we can pop the bit fiddly this put the cable through there <laughs> come on let's get that in there we go no come on doesn't want to go in this one there we go that's him Right, and we can just pop a bit of solder on, just on the end there, look, there we go, just on there. Oh dear, dear, dear. Right, come on. I'll tell you what, let's do one at a time. So... That's the plus gone in there. And the negative battery. There we go, it's got that done. Let's just pull these the wires back a bit. There we go. Right, that's got the battery connection done. <clears throat> 